Is it possible there could be a population of people with extremely high cholesterol levels in the blood and yet have a low risk for heart disease? Modern medicine would emphatically say no. The major carrier of cholesterol in the bloodstream, known as ApoB lipoproteins, are considered very dangerous. The most common of these is the famous LDL. A variety of studies show these particles are associated with the process of plaque building up in the arteries. Now, what if I told you that we have a study underway in a population of people with extraordinarily high levels of LDL cholesterol, and therefore high levels of ApoB, yet are otherwise healthy? For example, they all have low markers for insulin resistance, such as HOMA IR, but does that really matter? In a recent interview on Nutrition Made Simple, Dr. William Cromwell discusses research around this very question. First of all, is, is insulin resistance per se causing risk? Uh, do we have enough evidence to say that? Or is it also a correlate of something else? And if so, do we know what about it? What is it about an insulin resistance in, in resistant individual that raises risk of heart disease? So put another way, the, the physiology of insulin resistance has lots of layers. It's an onion. And as you peel those layers, it becomes more complicated to try to apportion risk to unique parts of the insulin resistance syndrome. This is where it becomes very, very difficult for people to have confidence that this percent of the risk comes from this, and this percent comes from this, and this percent comes from this because we have endothelial dysfunction, we have insulin signaling abnormalities, we have blood pressure abnormalities, we have lipoprotein abnormalities, we have glycemic abnormalities, we have the ways in which all of this interacts with physiology at the artery wall level. So by virtue of being able to impact this in increasingly more complicated ways, we begin to lose the appreciation for exactly how much risk comes from exactly which part of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, we learn on the one hand by division, but then we have to reassemble this in a way which tries to answer the question, and that means what for where my risk is coming from. That reassembly process is very, very difficult. Dr. Cromwell is describing a common problem with trying to figure out the causes of heart disease. Insulin resistance has a number of recognizable signs, and they tend to cluster together as a metabolic syndrome. So what researchers do is try to use statistical techniques to figure out what contribution each of these have to the overall outcome of heart disease. Based on these models, ApoB lipoproteins are an independent causal contributor to risk, whether one is insulin resistant or not. That's where people debate in, in hot terms. You know, what of all of this should I care the most about? Is it the endothelial dysfunction? Is it the inflammation? Is it the particle number? Is it the hypertension? Is it the glycemia? Um, yeah, all that's part of it, but I care more about this than that or this than that. And people are looking at small data sets handled in certain ways to inform them of what they're really, quote unquote, worried about. Mm -hmm. um, and I get that. And, and I'm not trying to say one group is right or wrong. I'm not trying to say that we've cracked the nuts and that everybody agrees. What I would say is that um, it is not true that you have to be insulin resistant for increased numbers of particles to be problematic. And I am not saying that if you have increased numbers of particles, it doesn't matter whether you're insulin sensitive or resistant. The two are going to intersect with each other and amplify each other. Now, you do not have to be a person with inflammation in order for ApoB to matter. But if you were a person with high ApoB and plaque, inflammation is going to accelerate issues markedly. Mm -hmm. And so this chicken and the egg phenomenon that we have is, is a great conversation to try to understand, um, but be careful. Mm -hmm. I think people get very invested in you must have inflammation or it doesn't matter. Not true. You must be insulin resistant or it doesn't matter. Not true. I have high ApoB and it doesn't matter if I have that in the setting of increased inflammation or not or increased insulin resistance run. That's also not true. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be amplified. And so 
Uh, we do ourselves a disservice by taking this very elegant system and trying to simplify it into the it's A or B, it's A and B. Mm -hmm. And because it's A and B, they're going to interact with each other very commonly. And we're going to intercept people who have uh, an admixture of the elements. And they're all going to uh, lend themselves to improvement if we can sustain insulin sensitivity for a long time. And if net-net, by virtue of diet, exercise, medication if needed, we maintain an appropriately low ApoB for a long time. Part of the reason this debate has gotten more intense in recent years is due to some who see their cholesterol rise on a ketogenic diet. In fact, the most extraordinary increases of LDL cholesterol are often observed in those who are the leanest and most metabolically healthy. Given Dr. Cromwell's concerns reflect those of the larger medical community, it's understandable why many take steps to lower their cholesterol. But for those who don't, and have otherwise low risk factors, we put together a study to observe their plaque development directly with high-resolution heart scans, known as CT angiography. This group of people represent an entirely new scenario. They don't have these clusters typical of metabolic syndrome, and they don't have genetic dysfunctions in lipid metabolism such as FH. Indeed, ours is the first prospective study on people with extremely high LDL cholesterol, but who otherwise have low risk factors for cardiovascular disease. But who are these participants? And if they demonstrate a different risk than expected, what might explain why? In the next video, I'll be discussing this unusual group of people and our own insights around this new phenomenon.